What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel. She is Abby Schnabel. I'm Noah Hiles, and we're here to talk some college basketball. Another week closer to conference tournament weekend, and more importantly, another week closer to March Madness. A lot of exciting stuff to break down, and a lot of great basketball, Abby, being played in the Steel City right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Pitt, Duquesne, and Robert Morris have all been pretty decent this year. Pitt, obviously leading the ACC um, now that, you know, Virginia lost the other day. And and Duquesne's in the mix, and Robert Morris is in the mix. Obviously, the latter to have a lot more work to do than Pitt does. Um, but it's going to come down to the wire, and it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, we're going to talk about all three. We'll start with the Panthers here. As you alluded to, uh, last last night, Virginia, the team that is viewed as the, the standalone best team in the ACC, loses 63 to 48 to Boston College. A, a huge upset that really makes it a three-team race for first place in the ACC to win the ACC regular season. The race is of course down to Pitt, Virginia, and Miami. Abby, it's going to be a really fun finish here. Uh but looking at it, is it fair to say that the ACC is now Pitt's to lose? Absolutely. And I mean, I think you could say that against for Miami and Virginia as well. And and when you look at the three, there's only three games left for Pitt, three for Virginia. Miami only has two. And and while it is Pitt's to lose, I unfortunately, when you look at it, think that Pitt might have the hardest road of the three teams. Yeah. I mean, two games on the road and one of them being Miami's a little difficult um just road games in general are harder to win and yeah you beat Miami at home but can they go on to the or go to Florida and and do it whereas Miami's last two games are both at home Florida State Pitt and then Virginia is at UNC and then at home for its last two and so you know Virginia could be considered having a more difficult schedule than than Pitt because it's at UNC and then hosts Clemson um, but I don't know. I think it's really going to come down to the wire. I think all three teams are, are, are safe tournament bets, but if they want to be that, the ACC regular season champion, the, they have work to do, and it's not like it's going to be easy for any single team. Yeah, I look at Virginia. I, I just think that the type of team you don't want to be playing at this point in the year is a team on the bubble, and Virginia has two matchups against teams that are – couldn't be more on the bubble with North Carolina and Clemson, two teams that are just desperately fighting for their postseason chances right now. And, and that's tough. That's tough to go into Chapel Hill and what will be a huge game uh, for, the, for the Cavaliers and for the Tar Heels. And then you return home to play a Clemson team that's desperate as well. Those are those are tough matchups. Thanks, thankfully for Virginia, it ends its season, like you said, against Louisville. That shouldn't be too difficult. But I, I, I think that that path is a lot more difficult than the one that Pitt has. With, with a home game against Syracuse, who's not playing great right now, after that win streak it went on, it's, it's lost back-to-back -back games in kind of blowout fashion. And then, you know, you go to Notre Dame, it's Mike Bray's final home game and everything, but the Irish just aren't really that great of a team this year. And then the Miami game is, of course, the one that everyone's going to want to watch and talk about. When you take a look at Miami, I think the conference is actually Miami's to lose, just because it has one less game under its belt. It's, it's playing to it, – and both of its games are at home. It has a home mm -hmm. matchup against Florida State, who, sure, it's a rival, but it's not a good team this year. And and I think, you know, the U will take care of business there. And then it gets pretty much a whole week off where I think they play, they, they play Florida State Saturday and then they wait an entire week to play the Panthers on March 4th. And, and that's that's a big advantage there where it can – game plan for what will likely be the game that decides the ACC championship should none of these teams get upset. They have a whole week and Pitt's coming down to them to prepare. That's why I think it is, it's still Miami's probably the favorite to win this. However, it's Pitt's one seed to lose because the thing that differentiates Pitt from UVA and Miami is it has wins over both of these teams. So while, you know, if, if they all finish with the same conference record, they're all going to be able to hang a banner that says, you know, ACC regular season champ and it's a shared title. But the one seed in the ACC tournament will go to Pitt if all of these teams finish with the same exact conference record. And so that's why I think the one seed is probably Pitt's to lose. But as far as, you know, who has the best odds to win the conference outright in the regular season, it's got to be Miami just because it has a lighter schedule 
and it's home for the rest of the season. Um, I'd honestly argue that that week is could be a little bit of a disadvantage um, yeah. for Miami. I mean, you talk to so many coaches when you cover college basketball, and none of them want a week off. Everyone wants the routine of a schedule because you can get rusty really quick. And that's why you see, I mean, part of it's TV, but that's also why you see like conference tournaments, power five teams and majority of teams have it the week before NCAA tournament because they don't want to have to go two weeks without playing like the MVC Horizon Leagues in the world. And so, yes, they do have a week to prefer. Prepare for Pitt, which which is helpful, especially with how many um, offensive weapons Pitt has. But a week could also lead to to you know some dust that they got to shake off early. And I don't know. I could see it going both ways. I think Pitt is going to come in guns a blazing. I think Pitt. Yes, do they have the disadvantage of being on the road two games in a row? Yeah, but. Honestly, I don't see that week off as necessarily a good thing other than to get a little bit more um, preparation in for the Panthers. Yeah, I I could see it both ways. I I will say, I mean, Miami has a lot of veteran players um, like Pitt. I mean, I don't think it's as old as as a team as Pitt is, but it's pretty close. And I think that can make a difference where not just – I'm not saying like these guys are old and they need a whole bunch of rest, but I'm more pointing out that they understand how to prepare – during a downtime, whereas a freshman who hasn't been in that situation might just be better off with less thinking, more playing. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it it will be interesting to see how this all uh, unfolds. A, just because you never would have imagined Pitt would have been in the same conversation as these two teams. And B, because, I mean, these are, just looking at it from a, a perspective that fans might view it, Pitt ends its season with three traditional opponents that it's played for a really long time. It has history against Syracuse, Notre Dame, and Miami. And there are great storylines connected to all of these games, and and all of them are so important. And that's what's fun about this time of year is the regular season really does matter um, because, you know, there's there's a significant difference between the one seed or the three seed in the ACC tournament, depending, you know, you're looking at your first game, in the quarterfinal going up against a a North Carolina or Syracuse or an NC state or a Duke, you know, like that's the difference in those seeding things. And and that potentially could result in pit, you know, a deep ACC tournament run could get pit a much better seed in the national tournament. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all super important from here on out and it's going to be a lot of fun to cover. So something else we want to, we wanted to talk about here are, as we alluded to in the beginning of the show, the two other college basketball teams, Division One college basketball teams in the city of Pittsburgh, because both of them have been playing some great basketball right now, and that's the Duquesne Dukes and the Robert Morris University Colonials. Uh, Duquesne's won five of its last six. RMU's won four straight. Neither are in, in the top of their conference standings, but both seem to be playing their best ball right now, which is, which is key. Um, Abby, if I, if I were to ask you, you know, which team has a better shot? Cause neither of them is going to get an at large bid. So which team has a better shot of winning its conference and making it to the tournament? If you had to pick. So I've had the privilege of getting to watch both, mm-hmm. um, and both have a lot to fight for. You look at Robert Morris, who w- last won a conference tournament in 2020, missed out on their NCAA tournament because of COVID, and then you have Duquesne, who hasn't won the uh, A10 tournament since 1977. So both teams are kind of in different situations when with Horizon League having tasted it for a second and it getting snatched away, and Duquesne hasn't seen it in a while, and you know, personally. Personally, I think Duquesne has the best chance just because I truly think that there hasn't really been a A-10 team that's really separated itself from the pack nearly as much as like some other conferences. Um, I mean, you know, they're, they're running on momentum, like you said. Uh, they have the potential to set a school record next week with the most uh, home victories in a single season if they're able to win against Davidson and UMass. Um, Coach Dambrock got his 500th win earlier in the season. And like I said, you know, they have that – that they're hungry for it. And so I, could, I see them playing really well right now, and I see them being able to take that momentum in. 
and and carrying it to a victory, especially with just how the field is. I mean, when you look at the four teams that are ahead of Duquesne, uh, Duquesne beat VCU, who's at the top of the conference. Uh, they lost to SLU. They lost to Dayton. Both of those were on the road. They lost to Fordham which was at home, but, you know, I don't think that there's any big team in their way per se. And then when you look at Robert Morris, I think it's a similar thing. However, I still think they're just adjusting to the horizon league. Cause you know, after that 2020 uh, trip or supposed to, supposed to be trip, um, they switched leagues. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's an adjustment no matter what you do, but like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if either of them made a run. I just think Duquesne maybe has the more um, momentum right now. Granted, they do still have three games left, whereas Robert Morris only has one, and their conference tournament starts in five days. So maybe that's a benefit to them. The 28th is crazy. Can you believe it's conference tournament time? I know. And so it's just like I could see both of them, but I just think Duquesne has the better shot right now because I think it's a more – open conference than um, the Horizon League right now. You know, you mentioned in the last thing you were talking about how, you know, having to take some time off might hurt college basketball teams. And I think that that's something that, you know, the fact that their conference tournament is right around the corner and, and they only have one regular season game left against a really bad IUPUI team is something that will definitely benefit Robert Morris. I mean, it, it's, it's, kind of playing like a team that, hey, we don't want to stop right now. We got to keep riding this hot hand. Um, I went back and looked, you know, RMU and its last four tournament appearances, if you include 2020 in that, um, I was think, thinking, you know, how, how did they get in? Were they ever a low seed in the NEC and, and made the, the tough trek? And no, they weren't. They were either the one or the two seed every single time uh, when Coach Tool was there. To, to get them into the dance. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's just a, it's going to be a much different pass a, because it's a, an entirely different league they're playing in and B that they, they have no buys right now based, based upon the, where they stand in the conference uh, rankings and everything. Assuming they beat IUPUI, they finish at 11 and nine. That's probably going to be good enough to get them like the sixth seed. So they're, they're playing, they're probably going to play IUPUI again in the first round of that, of that conference tournament, which is an easy win, but, you know, when, when you're a team like RMU, it would help if it had maybe just one buy simply because you never know when that magic's going to run out. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that went over Youngstown state, I believe it was last night. I mean, that that's an impressive victory. That's the, that's been the team that's been head and shoulders above the rest of the conference. Something we don't see at all right now in the Atlantic 10. And it's a confidence booster knowing that, you know, Hey, you did beat that team. Mm -hmm. But the reality is like, you're going to have to play them again. You're going to have to probably play Cleveland state or someone else. And, and how much more magic does this colonial team have? I will say, you know, Andy tool knows how to win big games. Um, he's, I think he's a really good coach, but I also think Duquesne has a really good coach. So that's probably why I would lean right now on the Dukes. It's just hard to imagine Duquesne getting the job done because you know, they, they've had seasons here and there where they were a little bit exciting, but in past years, the Atlantic 10's been a multi-bid type league for, I would say, more often than not throughout the past 10 years. And this year, it's just going to be a one-bid league, and that's a little different. And that certainly favors Duquesne. It's just hard to imagine it all playing out perfectly like this. As you mentioned, I mean, 1977, that's a long time ago. Norm Nixon was the star on that Duquesne team. That guy played with Magic Johnson on the Showtime Lakers. I mean, he, he's a, a Pittsburgh basketball legend. But it, it's it's been it's been a minute. I mean, you look at the teams who have won the Atlantic Ten since then. I think Pitt and Penn State and Villanova and teams like that won the Atlantic Ten since Duquesne was in it. So it really has been a while. Uh, 20, 2009 was the last time they were in the Atlantic Ten final. I remember watching that game uh, at, at Quaker State and Louvre when I was in high school. This is an all time because we were all rooting for Duquesne at that point in time because it's something we haven't seen and it's something we still haven't seen. I do think the Dukes are playing great basketball right now. They're at fifth place in the conference, and they have a chance to move up because their schedule is not that difficult. Rounding out the year, Davidson and UMass are not very good basketball teams. They should be able to beat both of them. And then a challenging end-of-season matchup against Fordham, a team that they lost to earlier in the season. But 
I think if they if they can take care of business against Fordham, that will lead to a bump up in the conference standings. It'll add some momentum heading into the tournament. That could that could make things interesting. I, I mean, I I still think that both are long shots. I, I wouldn't bet on either winning it, but this just seems to be a year where if Duquesne is going to at least make it to the tournament final, this could be that year just because, mm-hmm. like you said, there's no front runner. This league, you want to talk about leagues having a down year? The Atlantic 10 is having a significant down year. And, um, you know, when, when that kind of stuff's happening, when chaos is happening, that's when you see, a, a I would say, a second-tier league mm-hmm. like the Atlantic 10, you know, right underneath those power leagues. Um, that's when you see, you know, a, a five or a six in those conference tournaments win and everyone's filling out their bracket saying, who is Duquence? You know, and and like just mispronouncing it, not knowing that's when you see this stuff happen every now and then in March is in a year where there is no front runner. There is no, you know, top tier. It's from top to bottom. It's pretty equal. Yeah. I mean, I go back and look at, you know, 2020 is a hard year to look at. But the Missouri Valley Conference, who, you know, I'm a Loyola grad. They they were uh, in the Missouri Valley Conference until this year. And now we're in A-10. And, you know. Uh, anything can happen in a conference tournament. And you go back to that 2020 MVC tournament is, is Loyola and Drake were the top two seeds and they lost on Friday in the quarterfinals, both of them. And then Bradley went on as a, I believe they were a six seed. Uh, don't quote me on that, but they, they, they didn't have a buy mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. And they went and won and would have gone to the NCAA tournament in 2020. And I mean, it's it's crazier things have been seen. And I just think Duquesne has that momentum. Like they, they remind me of that back then. And they're just, they're just such a talented team that like, I really just don't see them having too many hurdles other than themselves. I think that their biggest opponent at this point is going to be themselves. And I, I, I just think it's the magic may have hit, I'm just worried it's going to run out before their tournament. And, you know, I would love to see it. I, I love a good, um, what did you call them, a second-tier team? Because they're not yeah. quite a mid-major, but they're not a high major either. Mm-hmm. I love when you get a little sneaky uh, pick in there, and then it's just like everyone has VCU written in their brackets, and then it's like, wait, no, we have to cross that out. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I, I just think it'd be pretty cool to see um, not one but two Pittsburgh teams go to the NCAA tournament because when was the last time that happened? 2010. 2000, there you go. Yeah. And so it's it's just – it's actually, just, 20, 2015, excuse me. 2015. Okay, yeah. either way. Yeah. It, it just would be cool to happen, and I'd love to see it personally just as a college basketball fan. Yeah, those those were the days back, back you know, a couple like a decade ago or so. I mean, Pitt and Robert Morris, they they were both in there. That there, I remember there were a couple years people were hoping that Pitt would get the one and RMU would get the 16, and we would get that, that Pittsburgh on Pittsburgh matchup. It never happened, but uh, – yeah, fun times, fun times. Abby, I think that's all we got. Any final thoughts here as we wrap up? Oh, man, I just can't believe it's like March already. The next time you see us, we're it's going to be March, which is crazy. It really is. And, I mean, it's it's going to get real fun here just with the, the stretch that Pitt has and conference tournaments starting up and just everyone buckle up. It's the best, it's the best time of the year for college sports. It's, March is coming. We'll see you then. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you liked the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed it on Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. For six months of digital access to post-gazette.com for just $6, click the link down in the description.